Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Jay. And today we're going to make this giant skull sign. Real quick before we get started, we just want to say thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. 10,000 is crazy. It really is. We're so happy that you guys are liking this stuff. We have a lot more projects on the way. Now, let's get started on this one. So a few weeks ago, we used the X-Carve to make a giant ship's wheel sign for an event our friend was running. It came out really awesome and it was really fun to make. So we kind of got inspired, like, why don't we have a sign? We can make signs now. We have the power. <laughs> So we went for it. We picked up some half inch Baltic birch plywood and then we cut two identical pieces at a length of about 30 inches, which is pretty much what our X-Carve can do. So then we brought it over to the X-Carve and then we got it nice and square using the marks on the table and clamped it down. To do these cuts, we're gonna use a 1 8 inch diameter down cut spiral bit, which is gonna give a really clean finish on the plywood. Every CNC cut starts with setting the home position of X, Y, and Z. This is a little device called the Z-Probe, which helps us set the Z-Depth by using an electrical current. Next, we're going to set the X and Y home position by manually moving the router bit to match up with the bottom left corner of the wood. Lastly, we attach the dust collector and start the carve. The first piece we're going to cut out is the background of the skull. This is the black part that sits in the back. This was a really easy carve, it only took about five minutes. We put in a fresh piece of wood and started carve number two. This is the white part that sits on top. Because of how our design is laid out, the skull is going to end up being in about 13 pieces that we're going to have to assemble like a puzzle once it's all cut out. When you're doing a through carve like this, the X-Carve actually leaves little tabs that hold the pieces in place that you pop out later and file off. The carve turned out great, so we popped out all the pieces, cleaned up the tabs, and we wanted to see what it was going to look like, so we dry fit our puzzle together. Our logo's white, skulls are white. So, we're gonna stain the top layer of the skull with this stuff called a whitewash pickling stain. And it's really cool because it makes it white, but you can also see the wood grain underneath. We applied the stain with a foam brush and we started with the end grain. It soaks up a lot more of the stain, so we needed to do two coats on the end grain and then one coat on the face. The stuff we're using is a water-based stain, so it dries pretty quick, which meant we had to stop in the middle and wipe off some of the pieces as they started to dry. This big piece in particular had a bunch of small little nooks and crannies where we were needing to get inside the little cracks and inside the circuits, so we used a small craft brush to get the stain inside. As we were doing the edges, we made sure that if there was any spillover, we kind of wiped it up a little bit because we didn't want to have any blotchy areas on the face. Now normally, the next step here would have been to paint the back of the skull black, but... So when we first conceived of this project, Jay really, really wanted LEDs in it. We couldn't quite figure out how to make it work. We didn't film any of this because it was kind of in the beginning. It didn't seem important, but then we decided it was important, so... So we did the obvious thing, and we hired some actors to do a dramatic reenactment. I believe that we should put LED lights in. No, it's too complicated. Let's keep it simple. But it would look awesome. I told you this wouldn't work. Fine. You were right. Who wrote this script anyway? Cut. So we're halfway through the project and we just figured out a way to do LEDs. You knew I'd figure out a way. We decided that the LEDs needed to shine through the circuits, which meant cutting those circuit shapes out of the back piece that we had already cut. We should have done that in the beginning, but hey, we needed this to be in the exact same spot or those circuits weren't gonna line up with the ones from the front pieces. Luckily, we were able to use the scrap wood from before to line it up. One of the things we realized would work pretty well is we made the circuits in the back oversized so they're wider than the circuits in the front so that when we put the white pieces on, it overlaps a little bit and allows more light to come through. Everything seemed to work, so we took it off and went over. We had a little bit of cleanup to do with a file. They didn't cut all the way through, so we just took a hand file and basically cleaned up all the little circuits. We took it outside and painted it with some flat black spray paint. We made sure to hit it from a couple different angles so we could get all those inner edges. To make the project even more complicated, we decided to sandwich some wax paper between the two layers to diffuse the light coming through the back. We glued the wax paper down to the wood with some CA glue. Now this part was easy. The complicated part is that to glue the white pieces down, we needed to cut away as much of the wax paper as possible to give a surface area for the, the white to touch the black. 
We cut out a bunch of little tiny squares between all the circuits, which seemed ridiculous as we were doing it, but it actually worked out really well. We did another dry fit of our puzzle pieces to make sure everything lined up, and then it was ready for glue. To attach the top layer, we used CA glue and put the glue on the little squares that we had cut out of the wax paper. We put each piece down and held it for about 30 seconds to let the glue set. We are going to sink a screw in from the back to really secure them, but the glue helped to keep everything in place while we moved the rest of it around. The right side of the skull is one big piece, which meant we could clamp it down and we didn't have to use the glue. So we did that, we drilled some pilot holes in the back, and then sunk in a bunch of screws to hold it in place. We drilled four mounting holes in the front with a countersink bit. Then we flipped it over and put it down on some paddings to prevent the surface from being scuffed up. We're using one inch spacers to float the sign off the wall. This allows room for the light from the LEDs to bounce off the surface and through the circuits and around the sides. To attach them, we used some CA glue and then stuck a screw through the center just so they wouldn't fall over. So we're using this really cool LED strip to light up the circuits of the skull and also give a nice ambient glow behind the edges. Yeah, so each of these LEDs is individually controlled so we can control the color and how bright it is. We're gonna stick it to the back of the skull and it's actually gonna face the wall. So the light's gonna come off the wall, bounce back through the circuits and it's gonna diffuse it better. It's gonna look awesome. The LED strips have an adhesive back, which means you could stick them to whatever you're, you're using them on. So the idea here was we were going to stick it basically all the way around the perimeter of the skull and then through the circuits. The strip wasn't as pliable as we expected and it was kind of a pain in the neck to get on, but we did manage to get it all the way around. To control everything we're using an Arduino Micro, this is awesome because we can basically program it to do whatever we want. We can have the lights change colors or pulse or turn on and off whenever we want, go to music. It's really fun. The electronics for this project are detailed on the blog post on our website, so if you want more information, you can check it out there. The sign came out awesome. Jay got the LEDs he wanted, and there's a giant glowing skull in our shop now. In the words of the great Michael Scott, this was a win-win-win. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. We had a lot of fun building this project and we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and leave us a comment. We really wanna hear what you want us to build next. And thank you again for 10,000 subscribers. If you're one of those subscribers and you've been with us from the beginning, thank you so much. And if you're just joining us, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, stay wicked. Hey, you said we were gonna meet Ryan Reynolds.